The Mesa Chamber of Commerce Inside Business Podcast brings you a unique view of Mesa through its vibrant business community and the subjects that are important. The podcast is produced in the Mesa Chamber of Commerce Media Studio, sponsored by the University of Phoenix. Our podcast is hosted by Mesa Chamber of Commerce CEO Sally Harrison. Please enjoy this episode of the Mesa Chamber Inside Business Podcast. Hi. <laughs> I'm Sally Harris, and the president and CEO of the Mesa Chamber of Commerce. And today, I am in the podcast room with our friend Chris Powell. Hello. Hi, Chris. Welcome to the show. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. It's good I'm, to be here. I'm so glad you're here because we've been talking about this for months. Yes, I know. We yeah. finally made it happen. Well, within our busy schedule. You've been busy. You've been yes. traveling in a good way, though. Yes, yeah. it is. Well, we have a lot to talk about, so let's get started. Yeah. I want to talk about why people would know the name Chris Powell. Well, first of all... Let's talk because, about your history. Well, I am a uh, Mesa native, yes. as I should be. Yes, you should. Born at Desert Samaritan Hospital, but it's not Desert Sam anymore, yeah. I guess. So, uh, yeah. but, but regardless, um, yeah, so I, I was born here, grew up in California, Pacific Northwest, but came back 24 years Wait, ago. Wait, we're in the Pacific Northwest. Um, Vancouver, Washington. Vancouver. Well, I did a little bit of time on Mercer Island in Seattle. Uh-huh. And then Boise, Idaho. That's not Pacific Northwest. <laughs> and then California, then back up to Vancouver, Washington. Nice. So, um, which was amazing, but then a lot of rain. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of overcast. I'm, I'm from that area. 24 years ago, I said, I'm going back to Arizona. So I came Good back. Move. To go to Arizona State University. Nice. And I have Forks never up. left, and I never plan on it. Nice. So, <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, but a lot of people, they might know my name from, um, I had, well, if you're a local, of course, you'll know my name from Good Morning Arizona. I got a gig early on in 2002 as the fitness guy mm -hmm. on Good Morning Arizona. And Very then, cool. Yeah, which is amazing. And it, there's still my family over there. That's In fact, awesome. I got a really funny story. In fact, for a period of time, Scott Passmore, uh -huh. who's the morning, yeah. he's the anchor man. He was kind of my, my father-in-law, kind of, because he was dating my mother-in-law for like eight years. Okay. All right. Yes. Yep. And, but Scott and I were buddies from like back in 2002. Oh, and so it's so funny. funny because then all of a sudden we introduced them. They hit it <laughs> off. And then he's kind of like my dad for a while. <laughs> so, which is a fun story there. But um, cool. after about seven years on Good Morning Arizona, I ended up, um, some of the transformations that I was doing here got mm -hmm. national attention. Mm -hmm. And I had the opportunity to create a television show uh -huh. that was purchased by ABC. Uh -huh. And I had a five year run on ABC for the show Extreme Makeover Weight Loss Edition, which then became the name Extreme Weight Loss. That's so cool. Yeah, it's yeah. been amazing. I'm moment. sure a lot of people, if they saw you or heard you, would know who you were. It's usually my voice that gives me away. I'm a lot shorter than people think <laughs> in real life. It's the funniest thing. Whenever I see people, they're always, they'll, they'll kind of look at me like, Dog ear to like, you know, head cocked to the side, like trying to figure it out. The moment I speak, they go, Oh, I know that's you. You know, you're, uh, I'm like, I know, I'm shorter in real life. But <laughs> TV makes you look a little bit taller than you are. So, <laughs> okay, that's pretty funny. So, you, you talked about transforming people here. Yes. So, is that how you got the name of your company? Yes. So, the name of my company after, after this incredible opportunity transforming lives on the mm -hmm. show, you know. I'm going to backtrack real quick. One of the most difficult parts of that is that we could only select 15 people a year while yeah. we were doing our transformations. Yeah. And we, no joke, over five years, we collected over 1 million emails from people asking for help. Oh, my gosh. That's kind of sad. It is. Exactly. <laughs> Some people are like, wow, that's amazing. I said, no, it's no, not. Read, read one. That's sad. And, and your heart breaks yeah. 20 times You know, by in, in a five-minute period. And then you read two and three, and you just realize... I. This is too painful. What yeah. can I do to help these people? Mm -hmm. And that's where as soon as and we we're so busy shooting the show, helping mm -hmm. 15 people a year, I made a promise to myself after season one. I said, as soon as this is done, I want to create a virtual platform that we can scale infinitely to help everybody. Very cool. And so as soon as the show ran its course um, and the contract was up, we I dove in and we started creating a virtual platform uh -huh. to help everybody transform. And so uh -huh. that's where the company Transform right. came to be. And it started with the Transform app. And then uh -huh. it turned into Transform Supplements. That's very cool. Yes. What a great story. Thank and you. I am drinking... Something grape right now. Yes, that's our boost shot right there. Uh -huh. that, that's a formula that I've wanted to create for eight years. And uh -huh. so it's both 
and I didn't tell you this before I gave it to you, but first of all, I don't know. Uh-oh. But, <laughs> real quick, before we even go anywhere else, how does it taste? It's good. Right? Yeah. Does tastes it? like Kool-Aid. Bingo. Yes. 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 It t- every single flavor we have, we created a product because one of the biggest problems that we were running into with our people is a lot of people are addicted to sugar. They're drinking soda all day, every day. Mm-hmm. And that soda is that escape. Yeah. You know, it's that thing to look forward to. You crack open the can and it fizzes. Oh, the fizz. and dr- that's exactly mm-hmm. you drink it and and it, it it you escape reality for that moment that you're drinking it down. Mm-hmm. But there's another way to help people escape when it comes to that flavor and experience. Yeah. Because our sole goal is to try to get soda out of people's hands. Mm-hmm. So we needed to create a product that could also help them escape. And one of the best ways is take them back to their childhood. Mm-hmm. And so that's why we match all of our flavors, match flavors from your childhood. But there's no sugar, there's no calories, there's no nothing. No sugar. There's no and sugar. Because it's sweet. I know. Yeah, it and, tastes and good. It's delicious. Yeah, it <laughs> but is. But the formula in there, this is our boost shot. So it's a focus product. Mm-hmm. So we have instant caffeine. So you get a, you're going to get a really quick pick-me-up. But then we have sustained release. We suspended caffeine and gelatin. So it takes a long time for your body to break it down. So now you're going to get a slow drip of caffeine into your system for the next four hours. Nice. Yes. Combine it with something called nootropics for mental clarity and focus. Uh-huh. So just... I love that you love the taste. Yeah, it's in good. In about an hour, and then in, in two hours and three hours, I'm going to keep asking you, how are you feeling? How are you feeling? And you're going to be like, wow, I feel really good. Oh, my gosh, I'm really super clear. I just did all my taxes for the next week. <laughs> I cleaned my room, and I did everything. You know, so. And right now, Bob is going, oh, my God, why did you give this to her? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Bob. <laughs> This is going to be the most productive day in the history uh, of the history chamber. chamber yes. <laughs> right. Maybe so. I need this for the entire team here, right? right? Yes. <laughs> if yes. I'm going to have it, everybody should have it. I, I know a guy that can hook you up. So, <laughs> so, so you've got obviously more than just uh, these these supplements that are go in water. Right. You have protein shakes. We do. We got our shakes and multivitamins and probiotics mm-hmm. and all that. But um, and so that's the supplement line, and the supplements are there just. To, to do just that, to supplement mm-hmm. a lifestyle. But the, the core of Transform is the app that we built. Mm-hmm. And the app is it's like five apps in one. It is it is a whole journey of transformation beginning to end. So you enter your biomechanics, or biomechanics, your biometrics, your age, weight, height, gender. You tell it what you want to do. You want to lose weight, maintain, and just lean out, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. You say you enter the equipment that you have available, whether you're at home, in a gym, whether you want to do yoga or dance, and it, re- it generates a complete program for you. But the, all the logic is everything that I've done was I've worked with people one-on-one. So like mm-hmm. that way you can get a truly customized program specific to you. And we've got over a 1,000 workouts in this app. Wow. We've got full macro tracking capability, 850,000 foods, 650 meals. So like when the app learns who you are and how much... Cat, like how many calories your body burns every day. Mm-hmm. Again, it scales every single meal specifically to you. Grocery lists, the whole nine. You've got a community of 55,000 people transforming wow. together on there now. Yeah. That's very cool. Which is, it's a lot of fun. Very cool. Yeah, it's really cool. Well, uh, let you in on a little secret. I have the chocolate shake at home. Oh, it's yeah. really good. <laughs> yes, I love it. It's really good. It's bingo. Yeah. And, and you yeah. Know, I do put thing. peanut butter in it. Well, let me get you our peanut butter. Oh, we have a peanut butter chocolate shake. I didn't know that. Well, and, and you're going to die. It tastes, again, everything. I'm a stickler when it comes to the experience because mm-hmm. the flavor experience that drives human behavior. Mm-hmm. And so if it doesn't taste good, people are not going to stick with it. Yeah. And it's consistency over time. That's what changes the human body. That's what gives you results. So it flavors everything. It's whole experience. You're going to love our chocolate peanut butter. It's like a melted Reese's peanut butter cup. I'm, all right. But don't take my word for it. Just read <laughs> read the Google reviews. That's all I say to everyone. Just read the reviews. They speak for themselves. Very cool. Yeah. Well, I like it because it, I've had lots of different protein shakes, and some have like a grainy taste to mm-hmm. them, and they're just not good. Um, some of the chocolate tastes fake, mm-hmm. and uh, and I'm not a huge like fruity like for that kind of thing. Yep. Um, so I would rather have like the chocolate and whatever, but. Um, the chocolate's, it's like stellar. It's oh, good. That makes me yeah. very happy. Well, I mean, and for the chocolate flavor, I and mean, we used pure cocoa powder. In mm-hmm. fact, you want to know who helped me like nail the flavor for our chocolate peanut butter shake hmm. is my seven year old Ruby. Nice. I'm not kidding you. I like her. It was, we took peanut butter powder, 
and cocoa powder. Uh -huh. And we just took a base with a little bit of sugar. Now, we, we don't use sugar in the shakes. And so, mm -hmm. again, they're super low in carb. But to get to nail the flavor so we could send it off to our formulators, mm -hmm. um, Ruby and I spent the time with, and it, she was cool. six at the time. And we kept running down to bashes to buy. <laughs> they were like, oh, we need a little bit more cocoa powder. We're out. Quick, go get some more Hershey's <laughs> cocoa powder. And we literally kept mixing it together until uh -huh. we got the perfect mix of chocolate and peanut butter. Very sent cool. it off. Sure enough, it's one of our top selling shakes. Oh, yeah, I can yeah. imagine. I'll get you some. Very cool. Very <laughs> cool. Well, so you are a Pretty chamber sorry. member with that, but you're a chamber member with another company, a company that you started not that long ago right. called Move One Million. Yes. Right? And so talk about that because the excitement for me is when you announced it and you basically started with everything going into schools here in Mesa. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Talk well, about talk about how you even came up with the idea because it's really – it's an interesting story. It, it, you know, it's a very personal story. The the background to it because um, I I myself went through some some big personal changes in my life over mm -hmm. the last few years. Um, for those who do know, who have followed me like over the last few years on social media, um, and so my my wife and I separated, mm -hmm. and you know, and, and which was a that's a, a big change in, in my life story right there. And so it was sure. ever, as as through any divorce and as the family's, you know, separating, you know, you do a lot of self-reflection. Mm -hmm. And I found myself, and I'm going to be totally just very transparent, immediately after the divorce, I first thought, oh, I'm going to start this business, and I'm going to start that business, and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to show her, I'm going to be successful. <laughs> and, and I kept saying, I'm going to be successful. But I, my perception of success was focused on financial success. Uh -huh. And I was I was in that place for about a month and a half, two months, and we're this is this is about February, January, February at this time and of twenty twenty. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then come mid March, mm -hmm. and we all know what right. happened in March fourteenth, fifteenth, sixteenth, and before you know it, everything gets shut down. Mm -hmm. And I I found myself um, there's the, the amazing buttes out here yep. in, in Mesa in the East Valley, and um, and I, I found myself just wanting to do a lot more reflection because I just, I, there was just this unrest. And mm -hmm. as much as I was running after financial success, it just didn't, I felt empty. Mm -hmm. And I was just trying to figure out, like, I was trying to find happiness. Mm -hmm. I guess, you know, at the end of the day, I was trying to sure. find happiness. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't find it. And, and we all know, oh, happiness comes from within. Well, yeah, I hear you. That sounds nice, but you know what? I, I wasn't finding it. Right? It was. I couldn't find it within. Yeah. And so I, I was climbing these buttes, and I, I, I love to climb them at night and look down because when you look out, you can see. You know, the Phoenix Metro area is four and a half million people, and you can see all the lights from up there. Mm -hmm. And I look out there, and we're we're well into COVID. This is like late March at this point, and I'm climbing the buttes on a regular basis. And I go up there, I'm like, what's gonna? And I kept asking myself, what's gonna make me happy? Where am I gonna find happiness? And and I. I would go to the top and I was looking out on all these lights and you think of four and a half million people quarantined. Mm -hmm. And at this point, we're, we're three weeks in, four weeks in, maybe even moving into like early April. And now we hear, oh, concerns of, you know, everyone's more sedentary than ever. Anxiety, depression, mm -hmm. stress, mental health, you know, like the, the, all the concerns and reports are starting to come in and like that people are struggling. So oh, yeah. I look out at all these lights and I think about all the people struggling out there and it just came to me. I was like, man, I, I'm not going to find any happiness chasing financial success. Real success and happiness is going to come. And how can I serve these people? Mm -hmm. How can I help them? You know, and I, I could look back and I just thought, man, I was blessed with some amazing opportunities. And what, so what could I do with my platform? And, and by the way, and like it just, it just, when I was up there, I can't quite describe it. I could just feel it. And all I could feel was that, there has to be zero financial gain to this at all. What can I do to serve them? And and that was the message that I got. I was like, okay, that's what I'm going to do. I'm mm -hmm. going to serve them. I don't know how I'm going to serve them yet, but <laughs> but I got I've got a, a bag of tricks, you know, and <laughs> and I got a few things like so. What what could I possibly do with my platform, with my knowledge base, with my network? How could I do this? I went down the hill, I turned on the TV, and, I, and immediately there's a documentary on Japan as I'm flipping through the channels, and I stop, and as I'm watching this documentary on Japan, they start off with, every morning in Japan, 6.30, the entire country does what's called Ragio Taiso, it means radio calisthenics. 
they started telling the story of Raggio Taiso. Back in 1928, Emperor Hirohito had two main problems because Japan was going through a big population boom. They were villages that were turning into cities, and he needed to unite them and bring them together. And on top of that, his people were only living be to between 40 to 45 years of age. Mm -hmm. And so he, he needed them to live longer because there was a financial play here. They wanted to bring life insurance to Japan. But everyone was dying between 40 and 45, so oh, he wanted them to live longer. And he was a big proponent of physical fitness. Uh -huh. So they brought in radio from the United States, and... He mandated in 1928 through schools, factories, corporations, everyone in the entire country at 6.30 in the morning, Raggio Taiso, there was, and this music started on the radio, and they went through three and a half minutes of standardized movement. Everyone in the country did it together. Wow. And it united them. That's cool. It united them so strong to the point in 1945 when the U.S. occupied Japan, we prohibited Raggio Taiso because he built his armies doing it. Oh, my gosh. It was so powerful at bringing his people together. And then, on top of that, Raggio Taiso, then we allowed it back in 1952. By 1955, Japan was the healthiest country in the world. Hmm. They extended wow. their life expectancy. We went to 84 years old. And they've been one wow. of the top big Big difference. Yeah. One of the top five healthiest countries in the world for the last six decades straight. Today, today, 2021, nine, or 27 million Japanese still do Raggio Taiso every single day. Oh, my gosh. It changed a country. Yeah. Three and a half minutes of 13 standardized movements done together. United a country, brought them together, and changed them forever for the better. Yeah, that's awesome. And I'm watching this, and I'm thinking, <laughs> and, and think about, a year ago, as you're flipping through the news, what do you see? Yeah. Riots in the streets. Right. Division. Everybody Chaos. hates everybody. Yeah. Everyone, and so negative. Everyone's, oh, it, it was terrible. Yeah. Everyone's, can't leave your house. Depression and anxiety and, I mean, stress and mental health. It was a mess. Mm -hmm. I thought, man, we need this now more than ever. That's what I can do. <laughs> Oh my gosh, holy smokes, I've got a platform. I got a degree in biomechanics and physiology from Arizona State University. <laughs> I know how to structure a program to get people moving. This podcast is not sponsored by ASU, just throwing yeah, that in. Yeah, this is kind of <laughs> Like, Should be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Hold on. We got to call some people over there. I'll call Ward. So, right? So, um, yeah. And so I thought that's what I can do. And plus, I just built the Transform app. Yeah. So I knew app technology. Mm -hmm. I know how to build something that, that I can get people moving. A biomechanically sound warm-up. Yeah. And so I end up creating Move One Million. It's, and, and Move One Million, it came to me because that's... I mean, there's another story behind Move One Million. I actually tattooed the Roman numerals one right. through a million down my side when mm -hmm. I was 13 years ago. And I struggled another tough point in my life. I'd lost everything. I was living out of my car. And that was a promise to myself uh -huh. to somehow change a million lives by the time I, my time was, I, my time had come. And Very so cool. I went back to my mission to mm -hmm. move one million people. Uh -huh. And I ended up building an app on the Google Play and App Store yep. and, and created a whole um, digital platform for teachers, corporations to just register. And now they get an email bro a broadcast to them every single day right. of the movements. And then the music to it was an anthem that I actually created for my people on the show. I was so moved by their transformation. I uh -huh. created an anthem called The Hero's Journey. Uh -huh. And so the movements and the anthem actually go hand in hand. So as you actually go through the total body warm up. You're reenacting the hero's journey. Well, and when you say you created the anthem, you are a musician. I, I, I guess I am, yes. <laughs> well, you play piano. <laughs> I play piano and guitar. Yes. And so it's funny, like from, from age 5 to 11, my parents made me take piano lessons, and I hated <laughs> every minute of it. Hated it. Until, here's a story for you, until I was 14 and I had my first girlfriend. And, and <laughs> she had a piano in her living room. And I walk in and I go, oh, do you play? And she's like, no, I don't play. This is my mom's piano. I go, she goes, do you play? And I go, well, I play a little bit. So I sat down and I started to play something. I looked up at her and her eyes were all googly and everything. I go, hold on, I'm onto something here. And I was like, oh, you like that? Check out this one. And then keep playing. <laughs> <laughs> and you better believe I played piano every single day from that point on because I realized that was the greatest gift my parents could have ever given to me. So, that or a puppy. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Same effect on girls. I'm telling yeah. you, yes, big time. So. That is awesome. Okay, so you took the music, yes. took the platform. Yes, and I took the platform and created Move One Million. That is fantastic. And I shared it with some friends who shared it with some friends, and before you knew it, uh, Mesa Public Schools heard about it, the mayor... 
Mm-hmm. Mayor Giles hears about it, mm-hmm. and he's you know he's a fitness buff himself, oh, yeah. and so all of a sudden there's this buzz, yeah. and it's just like oh my gosh, move one million, is, it's happening, and and so Mayor Giles is like, hey, we'll adopt this, we'll, we'll open it up to the city for you, so we're, uh, we'll introduce you to Parks and Rec, and let's get you into Fire and Rescue, and I got the introduction to Dr. Forless, mm-hmm. who's the the superintendent for Mesa Public Schools, and before you know it, now we're we're serving all the Mesa Public Schools. So talk about how you've integrated into schools because it's really it's very cool it's it was amazing so it was a really simple process i mean once you get the buy-in from the top down once the superintendent Mm -hmm. is on board she's like well hey let me introduce you to our top pe teachers and let me actually call a a virtual meeting with all the principals so and it doesn't take long it takes me six seven minutes to explain it to take them through it's two and a half minutes of the routine so it's two and a half minutes of movement followed by two minutes of mindfulness Mm -hmm. we're bringing bringing the kids to here and now then then finishing with positive intentions and telling them that they can do anything they set their mind to and they're powerful and that we believe in them and that they're loved like that's what our kids need and um they need that as much as the movement piece right absolutely yeah absolutely the mindfulness part especially now because the kids they've been through some pretty crazy times along with us right and we really don't know the effects of that we're you know we're starting to to we're getting feed obviously we've been getting feedback but at the same time it's like what can we do to help give them the tools that mm-hmm. they're going to need, not just now, but for the rest of their lives. Right. And so it's like, hey, we're d- and it's the same movement every day. So now forever, these kids, when the, when the music plays, they're going to know how to warm up their body mm-hmm. for the rest of their lives. Mm-hmm. When And then when after the music, they're going to know how to be mindful. They're going to know how to bring themselves to here and now, mm-hmm. to find peace in the present. And then, of course, then we finish with the positive affirmations about you're powerful. We right. believe in you. You're loved. Right. And there's all too many kids out there that don't hear that every day. There's too many people yeah, out there that don't hear that every day. Not just kids. Exactly. Yeah, that's true. So um just the so the implementation is super easy because it's uh the teachers they can register. It takes thirty seconds to register. Mm-hmm. Any teacher can register for the broadcast in their classroom. Mm-hmm. And once they do it, they can customize the broadcast and then they get the email every single day. It's a new broadcast every day with different themes. You got bus driver theme and firefighter theme and we even had Olympian themes. We had Olympians cool. record the, the movements and we all did oh, it together in a broadcast. Cool. Yes. And it was so cool. And so we're getting a lot of really like amazing people involved mm-hmm. and so we do the, the like all these different themed broadcasts so it's just fun for the kids and my dogs get involved and my kids get involved and so <laughs> it's fun and and now so we're five and a half months out since since we started mm-hmm. and we're moving over eighty thousand people a day oh that's fantastic we're well on our way to a million very cool yeah i i got actually got a really fun story for you yeah so i was just telling about this in the in the uh, lobby i got a call from the cardinals Three days ago. Yeah. And the Cardinals are playing the 49ers on October 10th. Go Cardinals. And, <laughs> um, but they were, they wanted to know if we would move the stadium for the halftime show. Oh, and snap. so move 1 million That's started right here in Mesa. Awesome. We are moving the entire stadium for the halftime nice. show at the Cardinal game. That's right. fantastic. So we're so excited. Wow. Yeah. That's very cool. Yeah. Oh, man. You're going to have to get your tattoo updated. I, right? yeah. <laughs> yeah, seriously, right? I mean, like, how many more? How many That's more very are we? I know, cool. Right? Oh, my gosh. Congratulations. Yeah. That's it's, fantastic. It's starting to go. Yeah. Yeah, it's been so much fun. That's very cool. Yeah. Oh, man. So, okay. Other than the Cardinals game, what's next? What comes What comes next for Chris Powell? Oh gosh! So well, I mean, since with Move One Million, it's it's growing quickly. So yeah, because you've been traveling too, right, to other yes. states. Yeah, so I'm actually heading out to Florida next uh, next month in three weeks now, mm-hmm. um, and I'm present. I'm the keynote speaker at what's called the Shape Convention. It's for all the public school PE teachers. They come together, and I'm the keynote speaker to bring That's them Move One awesome. Million, so they can bring Move One Million to all the the public schools across Florida. Because Fantastic. they heard about all the fun we're having over here in Mesa. They're like, hey, we want in on this. So I'm heading out there. I actually just got an email yesterday from the Nava, uh, the, the Yavapai Nation. Very cool. And so, yeah. So, we, again, I, there's that's a, a community that yeah. I would love to be able to serve. And so we want to talk to the Navajo Nation mm-hmm. and Navapai and, and the um, Pima mm-hmm. uh, Reservation, et cetera. So, you know, uh, actually working on a partnership with Phoenix Children's Hospital right now as well. And they're just the Very most cool. wonderful people over there. Very cool. And so, yeah, things are things are growing fast. We're uh, Dignity Health Hospitals. They've got six big locations, uh-huh. one up in Vegas as well. And so we're going to be rolling it out for the, all of their employees, 15000 in January. 
library. Wow. So it's growing. Yeah, it's, that's and, fantastic. Yeah, it's it, things you're taking off. I mean, who knows? What, what, and it started as a service project. <laughs> and it's just like, oh my gosh, this thing is, it's taken off. That's so it's cool. It's so much fun. So what do you do in your free time? Yeah, what, <laughs> what's that? <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, you know, the I do take several hours every day. Um, just to take my kids to their activities. Mm -hmm. So and that's, that's our you. time to actually yeah. connect. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, it's for, for the longest time, especially when we were shooting the show, we had a nanny and everything, but like now's the time, like I really need to connect with my kids. Mm -hmm. So I do make it it's a point. That age. Yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll leave the office. I'll usually work in the office from like nine to one thirty at night. Just picking them up from school is a big deal. Mm -hmm. And and then sh just being showing up for them, then taking them to their activities mm -hmm. and talking to them about all that good stuff. And so we'll usually spend like 2 o'clock to about 7 o'clock just messing around and getting ready for dinner and all that other good stuff. So that's that's in my free time. I'll work out, play with my kids. That's you know, awesome. yesterday yesterday's activity with them, we went Pokemon Go hunting <laughs> uh, at Red Mountain Park. Nice. That's our jam. <laughs> so, yep, and so it, you, you'll actually catch us at a bunch of the Mesa City Parks because they're amazing for Pokemon yeah. hunting, just yeah. for what it's worth. That's cool. Yeah, so that's what we did last night, and um, yeah, just what, whatever I can possibly do with them. Oh, that's that great. and rallying my team and kind of think about what's what's coming up next. Very cool. Um, there's another show in the works. Yeah. On, on the down low. Okay. Well, uh, you know, on it's the not down really low, on the down low. low. I'm speaking into a microphone. <laughs> I know, okay. Right? So that will be our next podcast, yeah, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I talk a lot, guys. I'm sorry. There's there's a lot of stories to tell, but. No, that's good. Yeah. Okay. So if people want to get a hold of you, how do they get a hold of you for Transform? Okay. So for Transform, actually, you know, you can always find me on social media mm -hmm. at Real Chris Powell. Mm -hmm. um, and for Transform, check us out at the Transform app. Dot com. Okay. Super easy, the transform app dot com mm -hmm. for move one million. If you yeah. want to bring move one million to your corporation, by the way, we're yeah. connecting with all these corporate wellness apps. Uh -huh. And so people are actually starting to get points for their insurance nice. when they do move one million every day. Yeah. Very cool. I, I can tell Bob Bob's mind was going there. Very cool. Yeah. And so it's super cool. So we're connecting with all these apps. So if you want to bring it to your corporation, mm -hmm. uh, m1m.org. Just and you can you can reach us right through there, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, and, and it's super easy. It's thirty second registration, and you're up and running with your organization, literally within thirty seconds to a minute. That's fantastic. It's been fun. Oh, congratulations on everything. Thank you. It's, Thank you. It's it's been fun getting to know you, but to see you know like how you've come from over here all the way to like the things that you have planned, and and man, going to the Cardinals. It's wild. That's right? cool. I yeah. must say though, thank you for all of your support. Oh gosh, personally, I'm... but just between you yeah. and me and Bob, of course. <laughs> um, but Sally, yeah. I mean, we we connected. It must have been nine months ago uh -huh. now, and um, all of your help uh, has well, been. It's been it's been fun. It's been amazing. I can't well, thank you enough. Honor to meet you and uh, help you and know your vision, and hopefully, it can become you know the vision of the entire city, not just. Chris pushing everybody along the way, but people like getting on that train and really moving forward I with you. I would love that. Yeah. All, all of us Masons together. Yes. That's, you know, how beautiful would that be? It would be awesome. So let's make it happen. All this right. We're open, in. Open invitation yeah. to every Mesa resident. Jo join us. Move with us. Let's move. Let's be mindful. Let's make Mesa the best Mesa that could possibly be. Good way to end. Our podcast, thank you for being here. Thank you. And we'll do another one when you uh, are ready to tell your story. <laughs> Deal. All right. Thanks again. This has been a Mesa Chamber of Commerce Inside Business Podcast. You can find all podcast episodes at iTunes, Spotify, or your own favorite podcast website. You can also find them online at mesachamber.org. Content of this podcast is copyright the Mesa Chamber of Commerce, unless otherwise noted.